to the cloud. All right, so from now on, if you talk, you're being recorded. Uh, all right, I'm gonna share my screen and jump into it. Um, so just to warn you in advance, I'm starting on the wrong slide, which is great, but we'll get rid of that. Uh, and I will start. So this is a pretty, a little bit last minute prepared talk, but um, I thought it was a really interesting topic and uh, I hope you guys will as well. And um, I'm calling my talk, Form Associated Custom Elements, It's About Time, which is a really terrible pun and you'll understand it here in a minute. So, um, I have uh, some slides, I have lots of code to look at, and I welcome questions uh, along the way. Um, and I'll just sort of get into it. So um, what kind of led me to this talk is a problem that uh, I encountered on our app and I ended up solving it uh, with custom elements and, uh, and then making that solution better. And the problem that I ran into is the problem that I see on almost every project for some reason, and that is dealing with time zones. I don't know why it feels like we keep solving this over and over again, but I'm hoping maybe I come up with I've come up with something that uh, is general purpose enough that maybe uh, uh, I don't know it won't suck. But uh, I'll welcome opinions on that uh, from you guys. So um, of course the question that Chicago posed in their uh, song, does anybody really know what time it is? I'm dating myself there. And uh, fortunately now we know the answer. Yes, somebody does. It's your web browser. Your web browser knows what time it is. Um, there's a handy dandy uh, API that's um, now in all even not so modern web browsers. This Intel.datetime format daily, and that will give you the user's time zone that's configured in their browser. And why do we want that? Hopefully it's obvious, but maybe it's not. Um, here's what I decided that I wanted for my app. And maybe it's the same as what you want. Maybe it's not, but uh, it'd be interesting to talk about it anyway. Um, here's what I'd like to have. I want the users to see and interact in their local time zone. Simple enough. But on the server, I really want to store things UTC so that I know really what time they're talking about. Um, and um, basically, I store the time in UTC, and uh, that is the the one true time zone. Um, a couple of years ago, I got back, I got into, um, I got my pilot's license. And uh, one of the interesting things about aviation, um, because you're traveling around the world at sometimes high rates of speed, um, rather than worry about time zones at all, if you're dealing with aviation, everything is UTC or Zulu time all the time, and nobody uses time zones at all. And uh, it's just your job to, to figure it out. To, to convert it yourself. And uh, it actually works out pretty well. So I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm just saying the server is just UTC all the time. So how do we accomplish that? Uh, oh, yeah. So if I do those two things, basically, my point is, I don't have to do anything else. It just works. So um, surprise to nobody that knows me. Uh, I'm a big fan of custom elements. Um, Custom elements um, are a way to let me write my own HTML elements and uh, tell them what to do, basically. Uh, and I'll, I'll kind of show some code. If you haven't seen web components or custom elements and I'm going through stuff that doesn't make sense, please ask questions because if you don't understand it, there's somebody else who's too shy to ask questions who also doesn't understand it. And you'll be doing them a, <coughs> excuse me, You'll be doing them a favor. I might have to run and get some water at some point. I realized I did not bring a water glass into my room with me. Fail. 
Okay, so um, what I ended up doing is I made a little NPM with a custom, a couple of custom elements in it. Um, I have a date time UTC output that you can give it a date time in UTC and it will display it in the browser's local time zone. So that's the um, display side of things. That's actually fairly simple. Um, the more interesting one that really we're going to be talking about here is the date time UTC input. And that lets the user uh, input uh, into the into a form element, it lets them input the time in their local time zone, but then sends that time in UTC to the server. And that's really the main focus on of the top top ah, of the talk today. Um, so just to show you guys, this is an NPM. Um, we're up to 0 0.0.4 now, and I'm about to uh, bump it to 0 0.0.5. And I'll show you the various improvements along the way as we go through this. Um, but let's start with the initial version of it. So um, I'm going to start by showing you guys the version 0.0.2. Uh, and date time local input at that point in time, um, and really all of them, they use an internal input of type date time local, which you, if you haven't seen, is a date time picker, um, but it is not time zone specific, which is kind of weird, but that's what it does. Uh, and then behind the scenes, I'm going to, I'm in this version, I'm synchronizing the uh, the date time local input with a hidden field that sends UTC up, and uh, it's the web component or custom elements job to keep those things in sync. And this actually worked just fine. Um, and uh, you know, I'll let's 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 go look at it. So uh, let's go ahead, and I am going to. I have some Git tags so that we can look at the code kind of as it evolved. And let's go check out the 0.0.2 of my custom elements. And okay, I'm gonna stash that. Cool. Let's go see what this looks like. Uh, Oh no. <laughs> Oops, that's probably bad. <laughs> I've probably got some slide issues, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. Um, let's start with um, let's start with the test because I always like to do that. Um, so I wrote a couple tests here for my date time UTC input, and um, I'm using uh, date. FNS um, that uh, actually Brian turned me on to that just um, is a handy library. It's I think it's a little bit better than Moment. Um, it deals with dates um, and times. But uh, I'm making a local time here. So it doesn't have a time zone. This is just 1 p.m. local. And then I'm making a UTC time by taking that local and converting it to the right time. Or, or sorry, converting it to UTC by passing in the time and the browser's local time zone. So this is this is the secret sauce for asking the browser what the user's time zone is. So uh, what I'm doing here uh, is I'm using my custom element. And in this case, I'm not giving it an initial value. I'm then accessing its internal uh, input of type date time local. I'm setting a value for it. I'm synthesizing an event. I'm dispatching that event. I'll show you why here in a minute. And then I'm reaching into that guy and I'm pulling out it's a hidden input and making sure that it's the right uh, it's the right thing. So this just basically checks. If I input a time in local time, behind the scenes, it should have a hidden that gets uh, UTC. 
And this is kind of just testing that if I give it an initial value, it does the right thing with it. So let's see what this thing actually looks like in the browser at this point in time. I think uh, I'm wondering if I'm running. Yeah, I should be able to just run this at this point in time, with my little demo server. Of course, it's not going to work for me. I don't know why. Oh, that's very sad. OK. I'm just going to restart this guy, I'm guessing. Probably he got super confused when I switched versions, but maybe not. Oh, demos are the worst. That makes me sad. OK. I'm going to do a little debugging here and see if I can figure out what's what. Um, yeah, this looks like... Hmm. This looks like maybe not what I expected to see at that version. Well, okay, I'm going to have to um, just ask you guys to trust me that uh, at this point in time, um, this is doing, well, maybe I can just, oh man, okay, I'll spend maybe another few seconds seeing if I can get this to work or not by looking at the commit history. And No, that's a much later version of it. Okay, that's enough of that. All right. So um, that's not really the point of the talk. Um, that's just kind of showing you what I started with. So um, at this point in time, well, before I do that, let's at least look at the code at this point in time, because I've only showed you the test. Um, so the code in this version, I'm using something called lit element. Lit element is a library to make building custom elements a little bit easier. Um, custom elements are an API that's built into your browser to let you create um, your own HTML elements. And what I'm saying at this version is I have uh, these attributes, name, value, um, and then a couple internal properties, ISO string and local date string. And uh, this connected callback, this is a hook provided by the custom element spec that just, it invokes this function on your custom element when it's wired up to the DOM. And this is where I'm taking the value passed, which should be a UTC date time and I'm making a local date and local time by calling my date FNS library. And then I'm setting a local date time. Or I'm building a local date string that just basically is that uh, that time in the browser's um, time zone. And that's what I use to actually make a date time local input. And then beside, behind the scenes, I have this hidden tag. And um, what I'm doing is anytime the user interacts with that date time local, 
I convert whatever they input into uh, UTC and I set that hidden. So um, that works fine. Um, the server will end up getting from the hidden field, field, the server will end up getting the time in UTC. So it works. And honestly, like this is the way most um, custom form elements at this point in time work. Usually you end up using something like this hidden as kind of your, um, uh, that's the way that you um, send the server what it needs. Um, and honestly, I didn't realize this was kind of a hack and not kind of, it is a hack until I realized there's a better way to do it. Okay. Do you, do you mind if I interrupt for a second, Chris? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, question. Um, are there any accessibility concerns to be addressed with those hidden inputs? How do screen readers and stuff handle those? Honestly, you're, there probably are. And uh, embarrassingly, I don't know enough um, to be able to answer that question right now, as far as like whether, <laughs> how that's going <laughs> with a screen reader. I really should try it out. Um, but uh, it, I think when we get to form custom elements, uh, I think, um, it seems like there are some good tools to be able to, to make sure that it works with accessibility. Good question though. So, um, so anyway, I got this to work. It was working in our app, passing our, uh, our um, feature tests and everything. And then I came across this really neat article in CSS tricks um, talking about creating custom form controls with something called element internals. And Basically, the idea here is that uh, I can now make custom elements and tell the browser that not only is this a custom HTML element, but it's a custom form input. And that's kind of what we're going to go through uh, in more detail. So um, let's talk about how to make what's called a form associated custom element. Um, essentially, there's just a couple of things that we need to do to do the basics of it. We need to have our uh, custom element have a static property of form associated that is true. And then what that does for us is it lets us call uh, an API that is um, more recently added called attach internals. Attach internals gives us what's called an element internals. And what's an element internals? Let's go look at it. Element internals is a thing that is so new, <laughs> we don't even have an MDN page for it yet. Um, as far as like officially supported by browsers, uh, it's only in Chrome so far. And of course in, um, in Edge because Edge is really just Chrome under the covers now. Um, but there is a polyfill for it and that made me decide that it was worth using. So if you're in another browser, really, I guess Firefox, Safari, um, there is a polyfill it, for it. And um, because of the polyfill and the fact that it's so darn handy, uh, I decided it was a good thing to look into and start using. So. Back to the question that I started with, what is an element internals? Um, the name isn't great, <laughs> but this is what an element internals uh, is. It's an object with a bunch of handy uh, methods <laughs> for lack of a better description. Um, one of the coolest is um, this set form value guy. Set form value will let an element update its form. And that's that's kind of the, the most magical part of this whole deal. Um, we have some other things around set validity. And we'll get to validation here towards the end of the talk. And I'll go into more detail on that. Um, validity is a little complicated but it is pretty cool. Um, so let's start with the basics though. 
Um, let's look at internals.setFormValue. Internals.setFormValue, like I said, it updates the forms um, form data. Um, if you've looked into the form API that's built into your browser, um, form data is just um, the, the type that kind of represents the data that a form sends. Uh, it uses the name attribute of your element to update the form. And uh, you can pass a form value a few different things, which is pretty interesting. Um, you can give it a string, which is what I'm going to do. Um, but you can also give it a file if you're a, uh, trying to build a custom file input. Um, interestingly, you can also give it a form data. And what this lets you do is if you wanted to, you could write a custom element that represents multiple values on a form. Um, and if we have time to, I'll show you the example from the article where they build a custom address input that gives the form properties for each element of the address. So that's pretty cool. So let's see this in action. Um, at this point, I should be able to go to uh, 0 .0 0.0.4. Hopefully, I won't have the kind of problems I was having just a second ago. And uh, we should be able to look at our spec at this point. And now our spec is actually testing that if we put our datetime UTC input inside of a form and then interact with it, I won't try to explain this code again. If we interact with our form, we should be able to test that our form data actually has the appointment time set. And I'm hoping I can actually show you the demo at this point in time. Um, I believe, I think this is probably a little farther along. I'm going to restart this guy just to see. Uh, okay, cool. Good, good, good. Okay, so this is version 0 0.0.4 .0 of my demo. Um, and if we inspect him, um, this is the component. Um, so this is the internal, this is the browser's um, date time local. And it lets you do this. This is all built into the browser. I didn't write any of this. But it lets you set the time in the local time zone. And we'll see here that if I hit submit, it's building the time and just converting it to UTC. And that's when it's going to send up to the server. Um, if we look and see what's going on, oops, sorry. Behind the scenes, uh, we can see that that submit button is just going to grab the form data and write its values out to the console. And yeah. So um, let's see how the UTC input has changed at this point in the code. Um, we have some different properties. Um, we have a name property. And now we just have a value property. And that value property is going to be the date time in UTC format. We have um, a synthetic property that's just going to get that value in the local time zone. Well, no, it's going to get it. Yeah, sorry. It's a little, it's a little hard to explain. It's going to get the date and time in the browser's local time zone, but then it's going to build a string that just doesn't have time zone on it at all. And the reason it's doing that is because that is what that local date time picker needs. Um, this is probably the, that's where I'm actually starting to use the um, form associated element API. I'm getting an uh, internals, and that internals is the element internals thing that we just talked about. And now that I have this thing, that's where I can use it. 
Um, I guess one other thing to show you that I forgot, I have I had to add the static get form associated and return true. And that tells the browser that uh, I am a form associated custom element. Let's look at the rest of the code. So the rest of the code, um, it made me happy in that it got simpler. I no longer have a hidden input that I have to worry about. I just have my uh, my input that is a date time local. And then on the input change event, I'm getting what the user input and I'm setting my value to be um, the time in UTC. And then I'm using a, uh, a hook from, um, this is a lit, lit element lifecycle hook and update just fires any time that an update has happened to the element. And that's a handy thing to do because this just lets me uh, call out to internals and set the forms value uh, to the value of this element. And the value is always going to be the UTC time. So this lets me keep my form in sync without using that hidden input hack. Any questions on this? This is probably like <laughs> the main point. <laughs> so just to be completely clear, because there's two values in play here, right? There's a value of the element, and then there's a value of the form. And it's the value of the element that you're keeping in the local style, and the value of the form is what you're putting in UTC. Um, is that my understanding that right? Almost. Um, so let's look at, and that, thank you for asking that, because that tells me I'm not probably explaining things very well. Um, let's break it down just a little bit more. Um, so I have a custom element and this outer element, this date time UTC input, it has a value property and attribute that's always going to be UTC time. Inside of it, it has a shadow root, which is um, part of the custom element specs um, that um, essentially is just like an encapsulated um, DOM, an encapsulated document object model. Um, I'm not going to try to talk about the shadow root right now in too much detail, but um, inside of it, it has a plain old input of type date time local, and that value is in local time without a time zone at all. It's like zoneless time. <laughs> so this is what the user actually sees. You know, I'm saying that I want to set this appointment at 3.55 PM in whatever time zone I'm in. Let's change this. And now when I submit, um, so at this point, it's already it's already updated this value just by me doing that. And 3.55 PM, my local Eastern time, turns out to be 19.55 Zulu, because with daylight savings time, we're um, minus four from UTC. And then if I submit, it will end up sending that new time. This would be up to the server if this form was actually posting anywhere. Does that help? Yeah, so you've got the two values between the input that's inside your custom component and the custom component itself. And Correct. then what you use the, that new feature, up the internals feature for is for taking the value from your custom component and submitting it as part of the form. That is, yes, okay. that is a much better description than I gave. Yes, thank you. So could you also use this approach to say like, 
display a phone number in the right format or a social security number or something, you know, like yeah. the back end expecting an integer, but you want to display it a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah. You could use it anywhere you have one kind of format that you want to display and let, let the user interact with. And you need to convert that to a different form to send to the server. This approach would work well for any kind of scenario like that, I think. Um, we were thinking about using it for money as well, because that's another thing where you might have different. The thing is, I don't know what the absolute value of money is where like time, you can just always convert to UTC. I guess Bitcoin is the absolute value of money. Is that what we all decided now? Just kidding. Money is electricity. Gold, the gold standard. We're all going to go to the gold standard. So, so essentially, you could use this. I mean, from what I'm understanding, you could use this to convert anything from where you are to what it would be like. I'm guessing, like anywhere where you plan to go. Uh, yeah. So, if I'm, you know, if I'm making my appointment, I'm saying it's, uh, you know, it's 3:55 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. But if I had another user who was accepting this appointment and this other user was in California, they just automatically see the time as 12.55 PM. Oh, OK. That's because cool. I would have saved it in UTC time, which is just you know um, Greenwich Mean Time. All it is is like the, it's still a time zone. It's just like the one everybody agrees is the like world time basically yeah kind of yeah and so it's just going to convert back and forth and the user will interact with it in their time zone and it should hopefully eliminate the goal is to like eliminate the confusion of like what times did you mean did you mean my time zone or yours it'll just always be like you know you create it in yours and whoever it is sees it in theirs and there's no yeah, so they don't have to do the mental conversion of okay if yep. if they're in that time zone I'm here yeah okay yeah that's yep. cool yeah and time zones are always you always have that problem in any app where you're dealing with times and you have users across time zones which is very common all right Chris, can you go over the libraries you need for this again sure um, the library that I'm using here is called Lit Element. And um, Lit Element, um, I'll just go over to its website here for a second. Lit Element is a uh, library um, that Google, as part of its Polymer project, came up with. And it's what it says a simple base, base class for creating fast, lightweight web components. Um, so if I wasn't using lit element, I could just make a class that extended directly from HTML element. HTML element is a class that's built into browsers to represent um, building custom, L, uh, custom HTML elements. Um, so lit element is just another class that extends from HTML elements and gives me some extra handy dandy um, features. The main thing lit element does for me is uh, it gives me the ability to define this render function. And it gives me the ability to use this HTML um, template tag literal and lit element will make sure that anytime a property of that element or an attribute of that element changes it will re-render um, and that's a pretty handy thing i don't know if i necessarily need it but let's just because you ask and it's interesting let's go look at the output side of it the output side of it is a much simpler custom element but it takes a date time and a format and that format is basically like any kind of string you know you could say like i just want to see you know the you know i want to see the date in the form january 28 
such and such. Um, and it's basically going to re-render any time you gave it a different date time or a different format. Did that make sense? Can I better explain something there? All righty. So that international date uh, format or the function that you use, that's part of JavaScript? Uh, format actually comes from date FNS. And um, it will take different format strings. Uh, if we go to datefns.org, it's basically, um, I'll probably just refer you to the docs on date FNS to see the different kinds of format strings they support. Um, but it's got a lot of different, um, you know, you can give it, so, yeah, it's kind of like you give it a string like this and it should be able to format it. Yeah, this is kind of, this is like what these format strings look like. Um, I don't think I, in my demo, I used, I made a demo for the output, but it would take a string like this as its format. Um, so I am going to keep moving if that's, if, if nobody else has any questions on uh, element internal so far, I was going to start showing how validation works. If that's cool. Oh, and I, first of all, I'm going to go check out the right version of my code. All righty. And, um, this is like, oh well. Um, sorry, this slide is garbage. Let's talk about the form validation API. Um, the form validation API, um, I don't know how widely this is used, um, but client side form validation um, has been like built into the browser since HTML5. It just doesn't get used a lot, it feels like to me. Um, usually people do their own form validation using like some kind of framework. Um, but I feel like, um, I mean, in general, I'm a fan of using what's built into the browser rather than relying on some framework to solve a problem that's already solved, but that's a whole another rant. Um, the way that you can interact. So what we're talking about here is how to to let my um, custom form elements uh, interact with the form validation that's built into the browser. And the way that you do that is with um, a method on that element internals object called set validity. And set validity takes a validity state object. And uh, that guy has a bunch of different flags for um, different kinds of validation. And uh, you also can give it a message to display if um, something is invalid. And then um, finally, you can give it a, um, an input element to focus on if validation has failed. Oops. And um, Let's actually, for some reason, my slides are now at an earlier version. <laughs> so that's the end of my slides. Let's actually look at um, what uh, this looks like at this version of the code where we have actual form validation going on. I'm going to restart my demo again. And we'll actually see that. Um, I've made uh, I've made a few more elements to try to um, test some different cases that I have. So, just to show you what all I have going on and kind of explain, um, 
At this point, I have a plain old input because I wanted to see what required validation looks like with a plain old input. And then I have my date time UTC input because I wanted to test what required looks like here. And then um, just for good measure, I wanted to have a different daytime UTC input where it's not required. And then finally, I made a datetime input that's not inside of a datetime UTC input. So that was me kind of comparing different possibilities to make sure everything kind of worked together. Um, and what I can show you here is if I, um, this guy's, these guys required. So as soon as I start typing something in here, it's in a valid state. The same thing applies here to my date time custom element. If I fill in a value here now, you can see that it's valid. But as soon as I were to like delete part of it, now it's going to be in an invalid state because it doesn't have a time. Um, the input or yeah. So the other thing that happens if as I try to submit the form, it will, it will tell me that you need to have this value. And let's go ahead and fill in all the required things. If I fill in all the required things, it will actually do the same thing. It's simulating sending up the form. So let's see how this works in the code at this point. And it gets a little more complicated, but hopefully not too terrible. Um, I have the input change event firing as before. Um, I guess the interesting thing is after I set the form value on the form, I call validate. Um, I've made this a little bit more complicated um, because I only want to set the value. I only want it. Well, OK, here's what I was doing. Sorry. Um, I only want to try to convert it to UTC if there's a value. Otherwise, this would blow up and give me an error, and I don't want that. And if there is no local date here, I'm just setting the value to the empty string. Um, when I call validate, that's where I'm actually starting to interact with the form validation API. And I'm saying here in validate, if it is required, if somebody set the required attribute and there is no value, then I am going to call set validity with the flag of value missing true. And I'm making my own custom message. I could make this whatever I want. And then I'm passing it my internal input so that the browser can focus on it when validation fails. If I'm not invalid, I need to call set validity to say like, hey, I'm OK now. And that's what this does. If you call set validity with an empty object, it's just like, we're cool. Um, just for um, some consistency stake, I have a synthetic validity property on my element that just delegates to the internal validity. Validity returns the validity state. Um, other than that, it is the same as it was in the version that we looked at. Um, the form validity API is a little bit cumbersome. I'm not going to try to go into tons of detail, but validity state flags, that's where that value missing comes from. But there's a bunch of other different kinds of validation that could be in play. Uh, and these are the things that it supports out of the box. Pattern mismatch, that's if you had a regex, too short, too long, if you were doing something with like min max. Um, oh yeah, these are like min max length, whereas like min max value are range underflow, range overflow. Um, and then I could just say like, it's some kind of custom error that only I deal with. 
Um, so there's a lot of flexibility with this validity state, but it is, I don't know, I feel like it is fairly complicated. But the, uh, then that result is kind of cool. You know, I get the same, you know, if I get rid of this, if I get rid of this guy and hit submit, it's going to say, please fill out this field. I do this guy and hit submit. It's doing the same kind of thing. So it's like fully integrated with the browser validation, but it's my own custom code to do so. Um, the full treatment here with um, those little pop-up things, um, those are built into Chrome. You can't get control over those. So um, a lot of people decide that like, I don't really want the Chrome to be in charge of validation. If you don't want Chrome to do that, this, if you don't want that, what you can do is, um, In your form element, you can just say no validate, and that will turn that off. So now I still get validation styling in that it turns red, but if I submit, I won't get that pop up y thing. So you can turn that off if you decide you want to. Um, the other thing worth pointing out about validation this red outline that's controlled by uh, CSS. And the way that works is um, there are pseudo classes on inputs for invalid. So you can style them the way that you want. So basically, this CSS selector will match any input that's invalid, as well as my date time UTC input when it is invalid. Um, oh, but I'm doing I'm doing some extra magic. Sorry, let me explain the extra magic. Um, CSS styling and shadow DOM um, is uh, not, um, not as straightforward as normal CSS styling. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this without going deeply into the shadow DOM. In order to let CSS influence my internal custom element, I have to explicitly allow things to be styled um, if I want to. So as the author of a custom element, I can define the look and cut feel of my custom element and basically say, do I want the user of this custom element to be able to style it or not? And what specifically do I want them to be able to style or not? Um, and the way that I do that, um, I'll show you real quick. Um, Sorry, I forgot to point this out earlier. I can define what are called shadow parts. Shadow parts are just little things that I'm saying the external CSS can style. And here I'm saying my internal input can be styled. And I do that by adding this part attribute and giving it a name. What that does then is let me define a CSS selector using this part pseudo thing. <laughs> I forget whether this is a pseudo element or a pseudo class. I get all that confused. Um, what this actually says is for the date time UTC input, when it's invalid, the internal input should have a border that's dashed and red. I'm also doing another thing where I'm basically, and this is me kind of experimenting. Um, I have a span here of error message, which I'm saying it should only appear if that thing is invalid. And that's me just sort of experimenting with like some custom validation messages. So, um, as usual, the first time I give a talk, it's probably a, a little rough. So I apologize and thank you guys for bearing with me. Um, but I am more than happy to answer questions. There's probably lots of stuff where um, 
it may not make sense if you don't have all the context of working with custom elements and things and I'm happy to go into more detail. So uh, for, for um, if you had to, I guess, summarize like what you would most like for us to take away from this, I guess, what would you, what, what would you want to say? That's a, that's a great question. I would say the most um, uh, important part of this talk is probably that if you are writing a custom element, um, you can define a property form associated and return true. And that will give you the ability to call attach internals. And that will give you the ability to set the form value on the form that you're contained in. So the, probably the most important takeaway from this talk is being able to call set form value and update your form from inside of a custom element. To look at it another way, what this gives me is the ability to have this date time UTC input update this form. So if I were to have a real form that like had an action that posted to a server from the custom element, I can say form, here's the value that you should send for me. That's probably the, the most important takeaway. Um, I also feel like this article is really, really good and if what I was saying didn't make sense, um, it's worth a read for sure. I will drop that in uh, chat. Oh, look, I've got some chats that I didn't read yet. Yeah, sorry, the time got messed up, so a few people had to drop out, but. So Chris, when you used the hidden input approach that you were using before you got into the form internals, did that have to sit beside your custom element or was it still wrapped, was it still inside it? Oh, I'm really glad you asked that question. Um, let me go back and show you, so, um, this, as of right, so the, the current version of the code that uses form internals, um, if we go look at that, um, let's go find one. If we see this guy, you'll see it has a shadow root and the input is living inside that shadow root. If we go look at the early version of this code, let's go check out um, u0.0.2. Um, oh, but the demo is not working. What you will see, the earlier version where I'm using a hidden input does not have a shadow root. You don't have to have a shadow root for a custom element. And because it's not a shadow root, the form will be able to naturally see that hidden input and it will just send its value along. I see. So it's still inside the, com the custom component, but just not in the shadow root. Yep, and that's a pretty important distinction and I'm glad you made me point that out. Um, yeah, that's the other big deal about form associated custom elements is uh, that hidden input hack will not even work if I have a shadow root because the form can't see inside the shadow DOM. It's like, it's, it's des a shadow DOM is all about encapsulation. It's designed for encapsulation and uh, the outside DOM can't see inside the shadow DOM. And that's why you need to, you need to explicitly connect things that you wanna connect. I feel like you're just like, your whole job today, David, is to save me from myself and make my talk better. I really appreciate it. Do you know if it would work for nested forms? 
Um, it would. Um, and they have a demo here in this. Um, you should read this article because what they do is they build a, uh, a custom form input and then they build another custom input that is a form that uses the first one. <laughs> so um, yeah, they end up building this address. This address uses the other custom input for each of these things. So yes, you can nest custom form elements and it, it's actually pretty cool. So um, the form ends up getting, rather than one value, the form ends up getting it um, attributes for each of these. And uh, the way that works um, is when they do the same thing with attach eternals, but um, when they set their value, they construct a form data. And basically they're making an inner form that is updating the outer form. So that's a, I think that's sort of exactly to your point, Mona. This is a nested form. This is like a custom element that has a whole form in it that is inside of a larger form. And that is definitely something that you can do. And I think it's pretty cool. I didn't need to do that myself, but um, it is a very cool, powerful thing to be able to do. Other questions? Could you continue that a level deeper, like shadow doms all the way down? Yeah, I think you could. I think it's shadow doms all the way down. I haven't tried it, but I think, in fact, I'm speak. The fact that I've already gone one level, rad input is a custom element. So rad input gets an element on internals that updates this form here. And then this element <laughs> updates the outer form. So there's no reason you couldn't go like infinite levels deep that way if you wanted to. Whether you should or not, that's another question, but I think you could. All right. If there aren't other questions, I'm going to stop the share and recording here in a second. All right. Thanks, everybody, for um, listening to me talk about things. <laughs> I will post the video um, to the, uh, the meetup, and, uh, and I'll also put it in the Slack channel. Um, if you aren't in the Cincinnati Tech Slack, that's a pretty good thing to join. I know I have a link to it on the uh, the Meetup page. Um, I guess the other thing, well, I'll stop sharing and stop recording. Uh,